So today we'll be starting with a new series on deep linking with React Native Apps. Today's video is going to be the first video in this series and we're going to be covering three things. The first is going to be what are deep links, which will be an introduction to deep linking. But before we actually see how we can deep link into our app, we'll talk about linking and how we can open and access links in our React Native app. In this, we'll cover an example in which we look at an authentication flow in which we click a link, open a browser, and we send back data to our React Native app. Lastly, we'll be looking at an example in which we click on a link and open our React Native app. And then we extract some data from that link to show that the app was opened from a link. So this should create a good foundation for linking and deep linking in React Native apps. And in the upcoming videos, we'll introduce React Navigation with which we'll be able to deep link into a particular screen in our application. So deep linking consists of using a URL that links to a specific location within a mobile app rather than simply launching the app. There are basically two ways of deep linking into your app. The first way is using a custom URL scheme like the one we have here, which shows my app followed by a certain URL. Clicking on this link will open your app on mobile, but this would break on desktops as desktops have no idea about my app. The second way of deep linking would be to create a regular HTTP or HTTPS URL that on desktops would open up the website as expected, but on mobile, it'll open up the app to the specific location. This second way is known as universal links on iOS and deep links on Android and is often the preferred way of deep linking into your apps. The naming for Android here is slightly confusing because like I mentioned, you can deep link in two ways and the first way of linking using a custom scheme is also known as deep linking. So before we dive into deep linking in React Native, let's talk about linking in React Native. If you're using a website, you could easily use the A tag to navigate from one page to another. You also have accessibility to the JavaScript APIs like window.history or window.location, which would allow you to navigate from one page to another. But if you're using a mobile app, neither of the above two options are available to you. Therefore, you need to use a specific library known as the linking library or the web browser library that can enable you to access web pages and links from within your app. So let's have a look at a basic example of using the linking in the web browser APIs. I've got an empty React Native project here. I'm gonna go ahead and install both the libraries. So I'm going to say expo install, expo linking. And for the web browser, I'm going to say expo install, expo web browser. Once we have both of them installed, let's import them here. So I'm going to say import all as linking from expo linking and import all as web browser from expo web browser. Below the status bar, I'm just going to create two buttons. I'm going to give the first one a title of open with link, pass in an on press, and here we'll use the linking library, tap into the method called open URL, and pass in the export docs URL. Let's just duplicate this button, and here we'll pass in open with web browser. Let's change the method to web browser dot open browser async, and then pass in the export docs URL again, and let's save that out. So now we have two ways of opening the links. Let's run them and try them out. So I'm just going to say expose start and then run the app on my iOS simulator. So here we see we have the two buttons. If I click on open with link, we see we're taken to the website, but we're taken out of the app and then into the default browser on the device. To go back to our app, we have to actually switch back to our app. In case of open with web browser, we can click on the button and the browser opens up within the app and then we can easily access anything we want here and click on done to get back. So one good example where the web browser and linking modules work well together is when we want to authenticate the user using the web browser and send the user's data back into our app. Here we use the linking module to create the deep link which is passed to the web browser. Now the web browser is aware of that particular deep link it does its authentication and it appends the data to that particular deep link and comes back to the app. In the app, we use the linking module again to listen out for any data that's returned 
and depending on what data is returned, we can move the user around in the app. So let's go ahead and try this example out. So for this example, I'm going to be using a new project using the create react native app module. So we'll say npx create react native app. The only reason I'm using create react native app here is because it allows us to use some default templates that are created for us. All it's going to do is going to use that default template and then create a managed workflow app for us. We'll name the app web browser react native. We'll choose a template to go with this and the template we'll use is one which already has an authentication flow created for us. It's called with web browser redirect. Once we have that installed, let's cd into our project and open it up in Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to go ahead and run this app. So I'm going to say expose start and then run it on my iOS simulator. So here in our example, we have two ways of opening up our link, which is with open browser async and open auth session async. Here we already have the linking and web browser modules installed. We have a basic class app within which we have these two buttons created. Then as we come down, we have both our methods, open auth session async and open browser async. In the open auth session async method, you can see here that it says it doesn't require that you add any linking listeners. It returns the redirect URL in the resulting promise. So when we make a call to the open auth session async method, which takes our backend URL, it returns any data that it receives, which is stored into the result variable. We check if that result variable has received the data. We pass the data and set it in our state. Once the state is updated, our method here in our render method, maybe render redirect data, handles this change of state, and then updates the text here for us to see. Now let's have a look at open browser async. In this method, we'll see that this requires that you subscribe to a linking event as the resulting promise only contains information about whether it was canceled or dismissed. So here, when we make a call to web browser .open browser async, the data that's returned by this call is actually handled by our linking listener. Let's have a look at this linking listener. Here you can see we add the event listener, which listens out for this URL data. And when it receives the data, it handles the data with this particular method, which is handle redirect. So in our handle redirect, if we're using iOS, then we dismiss the browser, we remove the linking listener, and then we pass the data that was received. After passing the data, again, we set the data to our state so that maybe render redirect data can print out the result here in our view. So now that we have an overview of the code in our app, let's go ahead and see how the deep link is actually created and accessed by our application. So we come down here to the open browser async method where we were passing in the URL for our backend. You can notice that we pass in a linking URI, which is created using linking.createURL. Basically what create URL does is it's going to create a deep link back into your app for the current environment that the app is running in. So since we're using Expo in the development environment and running our app on local host, the link that we can expect this to create is going to be similar to this here, which is exp followed by your local host address. Once this URL is passed to our backend, our backend now has access to a direct link back into our app. It sends back some data with that link and we pick that data up by using this linking listener and then display the data. Now let's just have a look at our backend. Here, if we scroll down to the bottom, we'll notice that there are three links. If we click open browser async, you'll notice we have these three links available. They have an href in which the first one goes back with no params. The second one has some hello world text. The third one has an auth token. If we come up here at the top, when the document first loads up, what it does is it has a default base URI. Instead of that base URI, it takes out our linking URI that we had passed in. So here where we had used linking.createURL, which will be the URL for our particular app. That URL is extracted out here and stored into the base URI. Then it updates the links by replacing the default links in each link tag and passing in the base URI. If you don't click any link, it just passes back default data with a message saying redirected automatically by timer. Instead, if you press any of the links, depending on which link you press, your deep link back into your app. Here in our app, 
like we remember, if you're using open auth session async, we don't need any listener. The data is returned directly back into this result variable. We can check for the data, pass the data, and then set it in our state, which then prints it out here. If we're using open browser async, then this add linking listener is called. We can head over to that. It calls this handle redirect method, which again, passes the link URL, sets the state, and then prints the data. Let's have a quick overview of the open browser async and the open auth session async methods. So the open auth session async, as we discussed, doesn't require a linking listener. Whereas the open browser async requires you to add your own linking listeners in order to listen for any data coming back from a deep link. One important difference between the two is that the open auth session async can use the iOS-based APIs to share cookies with the iOS Safari browser. The open browser async method, on the other hand, cannot share cookies with Safari on iOS. What this means is that the user will not be remembered if the user logs in using the open browser async method on iOS. And every time the user clicks on login, they'll have to re-enter their credentials. Whereas in the open auth session async methods, it can remember the user and you won't have to keep re-logging in. That makes open auth session async a better choice to use for authentication. Whereas the web browser open browser async method is a better choice when you just want to open a web page in your app without the user leaving your application. So let's try this out. If we tap this link and we want to pass back some fake auth token, we click that and we notice that we get the auth token which is set here in our index.html. Similarly, for our open auth session async, we click on continue. We again get those three options. We can pass back data, but now in the open auth session async, we don't need to add the linking listener as the data is returned back to this result variable. And then we pass the data and display it here. So that brings us to an end to this first video. We've covered an introduction to deep linking We've also seen how to use linking and links in your app. And lastly, we've seen how we can authenticate the user using the web browser, send back data from the web browser into our app, and then access that particular link. In the next video, we'll actually see how we can handle links that open up your app from outside your app, and then take you to a specific place in your app that will lead us next to React Navigation and moving the user to a specific screen. Till then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you try this out. And as always, thank you for watching.